Father, I adore you. I lay my life before you. How I love you. Jesus, we adore you. We lay our lives before you. How we love you. Spirit, we adore you. We lay our hearts before you. How we love you. Simple little tune, but such a powerful message, right? Good morning. Good afternoon. Maybe it's the middle of the night. Whenever you are here, you are welcome. You are welcome to come. The Word of God belongs to you. He has brought it forth for you and for me. And I am so happy to read it to you. So, welcome on this March 1. We greet a new month as well as each other today. A brand new month. <clears throat> but we are still in the book of Leviticus. Vaikra. We are up to chapter 24 now. Leviticus chapter 24. And oh, such wonderful things in here. And a lot of uh, cautions that say, don't do this, don't do that. And why? For a problemless life. For a happy life. To stay out of trouble. To stay out of sin. To know the difference, just like we know night from day, to know sin from righteousness. And so let's get right into it. <clears throat> and a wonderful highlight of today's reading is to read about the Jubilee year that comes around. And oh, all of the Jewish people look forward to that because God instilled great blessings in the Jubilee year. So let's take it. For all it is worth here to read, and it's worth everything. Leviticus chapter 24. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command, not suggest, command the children of Israel that they bring to you pure oil of pressed olives for the light to make the lamps burn continually. And oh, Kathy has a beautiful, beautiful graphic. <clears throat> of the priest lighting the big memor uh, can't even say it menorah candle and that candle that they have today is just right out in the street for you to see it's very beautiful outside the veil of the testimony in the tabernacle of meeting Aaron shall be in charge of it from evening until morning before the Lord continually, it shall be a statute forever in your generations. And so Aaron's life certainly turned around because he's going to be in charge of the candle, keeping it continually lit from evening until morning. He shall be in charge of the lamps on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord continually. And you shall take the fine flour and bake 12 cakes with it. Two tenths of an ephah will be in each cake. You shall set them in two rows, six in a row, on the pure gold table before the Lord. And you shall put pure incense on each row, that it may be on the bread for a memorial an offering made by fire to the Lord. Every Sabbath, he shall set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. Everlasting. And it shall be for Aaron and his sons, and they shall eat it 
in a holy place, for it is most holy to him from the offerings of the Lord made by fire, by a perpetual statute. Now, the son of an Israelite woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the children of Israel, and this Israelite woman's son and a man of Israel fought each other in the camp. Fought. And the Israelite woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. And so they brought him to Moses. His mother's name was Shelomit, the daughter of Debri, of the tribe of Dan. And then they put him in custody that the mind of the Lord might be shown to them. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take outside the camp him who has cursed, and then let all who heard him lay their hands on his head, and let all the congregation stone him. Now you think how easily today curse words flow out of a mouth. Listen up to how it used to be. <clears throat> and then you shall speak to the children of Israel, saying, Whoever curses his God shall bear his sin, and whoever blasphemes the name of the Lord shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall certainly stone him, the stranger as well as him who is born in the land. And when he blasphemes the name of the Lord, he shall be put to death. Whoever kills any man shall surely be put to death. Whoever kills an animal shall make it good, animal for animal. If a man causes disfigurement of his neighbor, as he has done, so it shall be done to him, fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he has caused disfigurement of a man, so shall it be done to him. And whoever kills an animal shall restore it. But whoever kills a man shall be put to death. You shall have the same law for the stranger and for one from your own country, for I am the Lord your God. And then Moses spoke to the children of Israel, and they took outside the camp him who had cursed and stoned him with stones. What a torturous death that is. I mean, can you hear someone just begging for them to stop? Blow after blow after blow. So the children of Israel did as the Lord commanded Moses. And we move along to chapter 25 of Vayikra, Leviticus. And the Lord spoke to Moshe, Moses, on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I give you, then the land shall keep a Sabbath a Shabbat, to the Lord, the land. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather its fruit. But in the seventh year there shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. And... <clears throat> I believe that's, that's what's wrong with us. I believe it's what causes many sicknesses. We have disregarded that, and we have absolutely worked the soil literally to death. Literally to death. And I believe producing crops that are not pure and wholesome and containing all the vitamins and everything 
that are needed in them anymore. That's just my opinion. Take it or leave it. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard in this seventh year. What grows of its own accord of your harvest, you shall not reap. Don't touch it. Nor gather the grapes of your untended vine, for it is a year of rest for the land. And the Sabbath produce of the land shall be food for you. For you, your male and female servants, your hired man and the stranger who dwells with you, for your livestock and the beasts that are in your land, all its produce shall be for food. And you shall count seven Sabbaths of years for yourself, seven times seven years. And the time of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be to you 49 years. And then you shall cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month, on the day of atonement. You shall make the trumpet to sound throughout all your land, and you shall consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his possession, and each of you shall return to his family. That 50th year shall be a jubilee to you. In it you shall neither sow nor reap what grows of its own accord, nor gather the grapes of your untended vine, for it is the jubilee. It shall be holy to you. You shall eat its produce from the fields. <clears throat> it is jubilation, great joy. In this year of jubilee, each of you shall return to his possession. And if you sell anything to your neighbor or buy from your neighbor's hand, you shall not oppress one another. According to the number of years, now listen to this, this is how they figure out what they're going to do. According to the number of years after the Jubilee, you shall buy from your neighbor. And according to the number of years of crops, he shall sell to you. According to the multitude of years, you shall increase its price. And according to the fewer number of years, you shall diminish its price. For he sells to you according to the number of the years of the crops. Therefore, you shall not oppress one another, but you shall fear your God, for I am the Lord your God. So, you shall observe my statutes and keep my judgments and perform them. And you will dwell in the land safety. You will dwell safety, okay, safely. Then the land will yield its fruit and you will eat your fill and dwell there in safety. True peace, true freedom. And if you say, what shall we eat in the seventh year? Since we shall not sow nor gather in our produce, then I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year, and it will bring forth produce enough <clears throat> for three years. Now, don't you know, <coughs> when they saw that happen in their fields, this unusually large harvest to be able to eat for three more years. They believed the Lord, wouldn't you think? <laughs> they would say, whoa, exactly what was told us. And you shall sow in the eighth year and eat old produce until the ninth year, until its produce comes in. 
you shall eat of the old harvest. And just imagine if they're supposed to eat of that three years harvest. The Lord kept it fresh. It wasn't moldy or food to be thrown out. Wow. It, it's fun to think it over, isn't it? The land shall not be sold permanently, for the land is mine. For you are strangers and sojourners with me. And in all the land of your possession, you shall grant redemption of the land. If one of your brethren becomes poor and has sold some of his possession, and if his redeeming relative comes to redeem it, then he may redeem what his brother sold. Or if the man has no one to redeem it, but he himself becomes able to redeem it, then let him count the years since its sale and restore the remainder to the man to whom he sold it, that he may return to his possession. But if he is not able to have it restored to himself, then what was sold shall remain in the hand of him who bought it until the year of Jubilee. And in the Jubilee, it shall be released and he shall return to his possession. <clears throat> if a man sells a house in a walled city, then he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold. Within a full year, he may redeem it. But if it is not redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house in the walled city shall belong permanently to him who bought it throughout his generations. It shall not be released in the Jubilee. However, the houses of villages which have no wall around them shall be counted as the fields of the country. They may be redeemed and they shall be released in the Jubilee. Nevertheless, the cities of the Levites and the houses in the cities of their possession, the Levites may redeem at any time. And if a man purchases a house from the Levites, then the house that was sold in the city of his possession shall be released in the Jubilee. For the houses in the cities of the Levites are their possession among the children of Israel. But if the field of the common land of their cities may not be sold, for it is their perpetual possession. If one of your brethren becomes poor and falls into poverty among you, then you shall help him like a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with you. Take no usury or interest from him, but fear your God that your brother may live with you. You shall not lend him your money for usury, nor lend him your food at a profit. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. And if one of your brethren who dwells by you becomes poor and sells himself to you, you shall not compel him to serve like a slave. As a hired servant and a sojourner, he shall be with you and shall serve you until the year of Jubilee. <clears throat> Every 50 years. There's going to be freedom declared. All right. And then he shall depart from you, he and his children with him, and shall return to his own family. He shall return to the possession of his fathers. For they are my servants 
whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as slaves. You shall not rule over him with rigor, but you shall fear your God. And as for your male and female slaves, whom you may have from the nations that are around you, from them you may buy male and female slaves. Moreover, you may buy the children of the strangers who dwell among you and their families who are with you, which they beget in your land, and they shall become your property. And you may take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them as a possession. They shall be your permanent slaves. But regarding your brethren, the children of Israel, you shall not rule over one another with rigor. And I wrote down, Amen. So that's how it was. We move right along in our reading today on this brand new month of March, March day one. We turn to Mark, the second gospel, and we are up to chapter 10, picking up with verse 13. Mark chapter 10, verse 13. <clears throat> Then they brought little children to him. Oh, there's a sweet graphic that Kathy has showing Jesus and the little children around him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased. And he said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms and he laid his hands on them and he blessed them. Oh, that's our Jesus, isn't it? Now, as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is, God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. And then Jesus looking at him. Now, Kathy has a beautiful graphic of that, too. Jesus looking at this young man. He loved him. He loved him. And he said to him, One thing you lack. Go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word. And he went away sorrowful. For he had great possessions. <clears throat> but it sounds like me, to me, we could rearrange those words. It sounds like the possessions had him. And then Jesus looked around and he said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples 
were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. And then Peter began to say to him, well, see, we, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life but many who are first will be last, and the last first. Wow. We move right along to Psalm 44. We have already begun reading it, and so this morning, today, we will pick up with verse 9. Psalm 44, verse 9 through 26. But you have cast us off and put us to shame, and you do not go out with our armies. You make us turn back from the enemy, David is declaring. And those who hate us have taken spoil for themselves. You have given us up like sheep intended for food, and you have scattered us among the nations and sell your people for next to nothing and are not enriched by selling them. And indeed, he did, didn't he? Scattered them. And they did not have Israel as their possession. But now, we are living in the day and age where he is redeeming them. He is bringing them home. He is causing governments to give them up. Give them up. That he can bring them home and once again build up Israel. You make us a reproach to our neighbors, David declares. A scorn and a derision to those all around us. And isn't that the way they were treated? From the horrors of the Holocaust and way be gener all the generations before. But that one is close to our day of life here. You make us a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and a derision to those all around us, you make us a byword among the nations. And they used to say that. I can remember as a young child, <clears throat> they used the word Jew in terrible fashions. A shaking of the head among the peoples. My dishonor is continually before me, David says, and the shame of my face has covered me because of the voice of him 
who reproaches and reviles because of the enemy and the avenger. All this has come upon us, but we have not forgotten you, nor have we dealt falsely with your covenant. Our heart has not turned back, nor have our steps departed from your way. But you have severely broken us in the place of jackals and covered us with the shadow of death. If we had forgotten the name of our God or stretched out our hands to a foreign God, would not God search this out? <clears throat> and of course, this is David speaking. This is not God's word. These are not God's words. These are David's words. For he knows the secrets of the heart. Yet for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Awake. Why do you sleep, O Lord? Arise. Do not cast us off forever. Why do you hide your face? And forget our affliction and our oppression, for our soul is bowed down to the dust. Our body clings to the ground. Arise for our help and redeem us for your mercy's sake. Wow. Tears up my heart. To hear the words. All right, we wrap up today's incredible reading. Oh my, hasn't God laid out some things? We conclude with Proverbs chapter 10, verses 20 and 21. Proverbs chapter 10, 20 and 21. And that and all the graphics have been put right there for you uh, to touch and to redeem, to save if you would like. Please enjoy the graphics. Let them even make more out of what you have heard, okay? And um, <clears throat> share it with your friends. Please share with your friends. Let's be evangelists. Let's be evangelists, putting the Word of God out there for everyone. And you can tell them they can go on YouTube also. Melissa puts them on YouTube to enjoy. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 20. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. How about that? Oh, that's the kind of tongue I want to have. How about you? The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is worth little. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. Oh, what a day and age this is for us to see those words come to pass. In both directions, the righteous doing more living their lives even more righteously, and the wicked getting more wicked every day. Please, if you have not asked Jesus to come into your heart, if you've not confessed your sins, I pray that maybe you feel some conviction today from hearing the word of God. Jesus saying, come into the kingdom like a little child. Please avail yourself of time today, like right now, to bow your heart in your mind, in your body, in your knees, in your spirit, to the Lord. And take time to confess your sins to him and ask him to forgive you of your sins. I'm asking you, Lord, even as I say these words, 
I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. Any and all sins of yesterday and the past. Please, Lord, wash me clean by your precious shed blood. Fill me fresh and new with new power, <clears throat> new joy, new dedication to you through Holy Spirit, who's our helper. Ask him to fill you with Holy Spirit. He is a person. He's not an it. People say the Holy Spirit it. Mm -mm. That's somebody who doesn't know the Holy Spirit intimately. The Holy Spirit, he, third person of the Trinity, alive, wants to come and comfort you, wants to come and be asked to live in you and help direct your life, that your steps will be righteous. Please, Lord, cause many to come to you today repentive and ask you to come into their hearts. Ask you and begin to follow you, walk with you, talk with you, pray with you. Come into the church, your body, and become a part of find their place where their gifts and their talents from you fit in and help build up the church, bringing many, witnessing and telling their friends who don't know you and bringing them. Father, let us be about your business. Please help us all to extend ourselves way beyond what we think we can do. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Father, we hold up Jerusalem and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem today. The peace, peace, not war, not fighting and anger and deceit and all of the bad things you could name. Father God, let peace rule and reign in Jerusalem. Let all of the tourists, the visitors who have come thrilled to come and be in the land. Let them just expel from their very presence joy and peace. Let them be encouragers of the people. Let them buy gifts and souvenirs and support the shops. Let them go through the shook and shop and bring things back home to give away. We trust you, Lord, that this will be a day of prosperity in Israel. Lord, we pray for the Knesset. We pray for the government. We pray for Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, anointed by you, loves Israel, loves his people, loves his land. Precious Lord, let them make wise and good decisions today. Let them be <clears throat> people who stand in for all of the Israeli people. Let them have a fond love and make decisions that will be good for all the people. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We ask, Lord, that you continue to bless and bring your people home. Oh, we pray for that, Lord. We pray for that. Father God, I hold up America to you. Precious God, I'd ask that all evil, all deceit, all fraud, fraud, people bragging in places that they never won, they're not even supposed to be there. And they are failures there. They are failures because your blessing is not on it. Father God, we'd ask you to continue to expose in America all of the fraud, 
all of the stealing and that good people would be put in place for this next election. Honest people. Please, Lord. Please, let people in charge take authority and put out people they feel in their hearts did not do a job that was loving of the land and people. Please, Lord, weed them out. Weed them out. You know the hearts. You know the motives. And we are trusting you, Lord. We are trusting you. I hold up, Lord, the children today. I hold up all the children, everybody's children. I particularly hold up children who are suffering. I rebuke cancer amongst our little children. Father God, please, please bring healing. Bring love. Father, change hearts of caretakers, of mothers and fathers who are neglecting their children or even abusing their children. Change their hearts, Lord. Let them be ashamed and let them turn away from this sin. And if not, Lord, I'd ask that these children would be remo removed from abuse and placed in hands of married people, fathers and mothers who maybe can't have a child of their own. And they want a baby. They want a child so badly. Father, please, let adoption become a very great word for today. You adopted us into your family. We Gentiles. Adoption is a very big word with you. Father God, please, let our land Receive the word adoption and let us begin to take care of neglected people, not only the children, but Lord, those struggling in midlife, those who are just, they, they can't make ends meet. Please, Lord, let people help them. Let people instruct them. Let people offer them better jobs. And Father, the elderly, precious Lord, let families respond and honor their fathers and their mothers by seeing that they are taken care of one way or the other. Let them love them. Let them visit them, not neglect them. Let them bring the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren to bless their hearts. Let them bring the dogs and the cats that they might pet them and talk to them and enjoy them. Let them bring their parents to their homes and love on them and take care. Many, many ways, many ways. And we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you for healing them. Heal these children, heal the elderly of every disease of every broken heart. Father, heal, please, the broken hearts and let loving people come and help them heal. All in the name and for the glory of Jesus Christ and all of God's children. Quite a hearty amen. Kept on with your own prayers. I love you all so much. And Jesus loves you with an eternal everlasting love. Bye-bye.